Okay, now this video is a long time coming. I've been so busy that I never had a chance to actually just stop, take some time out, and just actually do a tutorial vid. This vid may be just as long as the one that I did last time, but you, we won't quite know that until after I do it. So, um, this is another video on Windows Movie Maker. Um, I remember about maybe six months ago, ECW Paul had asked me about how to keep the Windows Movie Maker from crashing when he's doing his videos because he 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 like me likes to use a lot of effects and basically when you use a lot of effects at one time but you don't have the memory for it let's say you have real low ram like you don't have like one gig a ddr ram you just have like 256 or something that shit's gonna crash when you use a lot of effects one of the main reasons why it crashes is because the screen believe it or not the screen is actually connected to how the computer works the, normally the bigger the screen the more stuff it can handle the smaller the screen the worse off you are so I have like a 19 inch screen right but I still notice when I use a lot of effects it tends to start getting ready to crash one of the things that I did to keep it from crashing as often was I shrunk the screen in Windows Movie Maker down you know the preview screen I shrunk that down and I shrunk it down as small as I could so that helped but it still had a tendency of crashing so what I then proceeded to do was um if I remember correctly I paused it. I paused the entire thing. I didn't let it play back any longer. I paused it. And I went and published it. I published the clips that I already had done. And then when I published them and played them back, they played back and I got to see my end result. And I w was just had to make a decision on whether I wanted to keep it or not. So what we're just going to go through today is basically certain ways to keep your system from crashing when you're using Windows Movie Maker. The best and most obvious way to keep it from crashing is to just make sure you have a lot of memory to use when you're editing your videos. Which means you cannot have any other programs running. I really do recommend you not having any programs that's not necessary to run Windows Vista on at all. So that means if you have AIM, cut the AIM off. Skype, cut the Skype off. Some type of video program, video watcher program, cut that off. Anything that's not necessary to be on, cut it off, including Internet Explorer or Firefox. Any extra programs that's on eats up the memory along with the Windows Movie Maker. Also, just so you know, people, if you're like me and you like to ha try to hack things and you have a hacked version of Windows Movie Maker that you may have created using WindowsMovieMakers.net, let me remind you that since these are all user created programs they have a high a very high tendency of crashing your computer if they're not completely compatible so just be very careful on that aspect too if you notice you'll see I have a lot more effects than what you would normally see on any other uh, Windows um, Movie Maker or program on Vista or XP and I wouldn't have these without having have some type of hacked version of it basically user created stuff so um let's continue first like I said make sure you have a, a lot of free memory to use for it also if you're a, like me also and you like to download a lot of things then you have another problem because if you don't have a good am amount of hard disk space on your computer too it tends to also crash because there's nothing I don't really know how to explain it as, as well as somebody who's more computer savvy but basically the less RAM and less free space you have on your computer the harder it is to use Windows Movie Maker or any other type of editing program or any program in general free space and 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 RAM space is what makes the computer run at all without that you're pretty much screwed everything will run slow like a snail in any event let me continue on with saying that once you free up your space 
then we're gonna just start adding effects. It don't even it don't it could be any effects you like it. You don't have to follow the way that I'm doing the effects because you can only add up to about six to seven effects at a, on one clip anyway. So um you just do that and then you test it. Now, if you notice that it's still going fast, that it's not messing up, then you're fine. But if you notice that it is starting to go real slow and frag like, that's when you see that you got the problem. This is uh, w where this method comes in of you publishing one clip at a time. It takes real long, I know, but if you don't have any other video editing program or you do have a video editing program but you don't know how to use it, Windows Movie Maker comes along real fine and dandy. And it's real good to use if you know what you're doing. If anybody see my Titan Trons, they look almost like they was done in another video editing program. You wouldn't even be able to tell the difference if I didn't say that I did it in Windows Movie Maker. So, um, like I said, if you're not having a problem right then, it's still moving fast, it's, that's okay, but the more clips you add to the timeline and the more effects you add, the more likely it's going to start crashing. So, like I said, if it starts going real slow and frag-like, stop the video, don't let it play any longer, stop it, go to publish, and publish it to your computer. When you publish it to your computer, then you can play the clip back in Windows Media Player, even though really I suggest to people get the GOM player it's a much better player it lets you actually see what you I don't let me try to explain it better it lets you see exactly how your video came out let's see you have 720 by 480 resolution it shows in that effect if you have 320 by by 240 it shows in that effect 640 by you know or so on and so on. It shows in the correct re resolution and it lets you know exactly what you have. Windows Media Player, not so much. It shows in the same size no matter what and it doesn't show you the correct resolution. At least that's my opinion. Um, in any event, once you finish publishing it, you check it out, you'll see that all your effects work and then you import it back in the movie maker and you'll be able to play it in movie maker because it, it'll be compressed into the video so from that point on then if you wanted to do even more effects to that clip you can actually take the clip that you would already added previous effects to and add even more effects to it and you can keep going on and on with this you can keep going up until the video itself looks too distorted to recognize if you wanted to but you can do it if you follow that method so like I said the main things you need to know is you have to have free RAM and free hard disk space you have to um, make sure that you don't have nothing else running that's not necessary to run um, and that's about it oh and um, shrink the video size within the preview window of your Windows Movie Maker. That's about it. If anything else happens that you need to know about, just tell me and I'll see if I can help you. Alright, later people.